Uh, I'm Jay Parkinson. I am a doctor in Williamsburg, uh, Brooklyn. And I bet, how many of you guys uh, knew that the edge of medicine was in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, as a matter of fact? In the house. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I did two residencies. My first one was in pediatrics. My second one was in uh, preventive medicine at Johns Hopkins, where I also got my master's in public health. <clears throat> I'm also the chief imagineer of a company called MICA. We're a software company up in Canada. We have about 20 employees that uh, do a lot of really awesome stuff that I'm going to get to show you. So um, a little preface to this discussion. First of all, I talk a lot about doctors. And I speak specifically about primary care doctors. Specialists, I'm going to reserve them from another, for another talk. All right? So basically, I just want to tell you guys that I went into medicine to change a world, really. I mean, for each one of my patients, as a matter of fact. And here I am on this stage in front of amazing, amazing people and that are changing the world for the world. So thank you for welcoming me up here. Um, I just have one question for you guys. What's the main reason relationships fail? Oh, man, you guys are really, really good. Very, very fast, um, and that's true. It's bad communication. That's the reason why relationships fail. You guys ever heard of the doctor-patient relationship? Of course. Well, you know what? I'm sorry to tell you that it's failed. I mean, pretty miserably, as a matter of fact. I get eight minutes of communication with people. Um, and the first day of medical school, I really got married to you as a patient. And, you know, I'm now having an affair. <laughs> it's a pretty bad one, of course. She's pretty stingy. I mean, you know, she's demanding, extremely controlling. She's abusive, even. And so who is she? Well, she's the insurance companies. And that's pretty unfortunate. But she's my sugar mama, you know? I mean, she pays me, of course. She's, you know, I got to keep her happy, because that's where the check's coming from. And if I don't, she doesn't pay me. So I know it's dysfunctional. I know it's really ridiculous. But you know, I just really, obviously, I want out more than anything. I mean, it's time to go. I mean, I really just want to be happy again. And I want you to be happy. And I want the person I married to be happy. I want my relationship back. <clears throat> so on the first day of medical school, I did get married. And 468 80-hour work weeks later, I got her back. On September 24th, 2007, just over a year ago, I hung up my shingle with $1,500 I saved up from residency. <laughs> my goal was to just provide a super easy visit for people. And what I did, I designed my own website. And people would, would go to my site, visit my site, see my Google Calendar, choose their own time, tell me their symptoms. My iPhone alerts me. I do a house call, and they pay me via PayPal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I kept it in Williamsburg. I didn't go outside of Williamsburg. It was small. But importantly, I communicated normally. I didn't have any office. I didn't have any staff. I had the internet and your apartment. It was really the world's first virtual primary care practice. But really, it was the Toyota way. It was lean. It enabled me to practice medicine and solve 90% of the problems. I mean, when you go to primary care, when you go to the doctor, they don't whip out like $50,000 machine to diagnose your strep throat. It took care of a lot of problems. It was very DIY. But I got a lot of press. I mean, I this Boing Boing, Kotke, Gothamist, Wired, Yahoo News, Seth Godin. It was pretty crazy. But then the healthcare industry started paying attention to all this stuff. And I was on the equivalent of Time Magazine for the healthcare in the American Hospital Association. So why? Why did I get all this press? Well, it was pretty unique, and it was pretty gimmicky. I mean, I sure did meet a need, though. And that's really why I did it. I was, accessible, I was an accessible doctor who communicated just like you do. Have you tried to find one of those lately? I mean, it's pretty hard. <laughs> Say, for instance, if you're in Massachusetts, well, they mandated insurance a while back. They, uh, <clears throat> they actually added 340,000 people to the insurance pool. They were all paying about $400 a month, so they all said, I better use it, right? 
So the wait time went up to 52 days for an eight minute visit. That's called abundance. <laughs> but what about scarcity? Well, that's primary care doctors. That's me. You can lump me in with the 5% of people that decided to go into primary care this year. And primary care is the foundation of a strong healthcare system, though. But I'm $240,000 in debt from medical school, just medical school. And if I wanted to take a job in Connecticut, for instance, I could work there. I could start at $72,000 an hour, working 60 hours a week and make $23 an hour. That's what starting is. If I wanted to do that in New York City, I'd make $110,000 and I'd make $35 an hour. A specialist makes three to 10 times that. You know, they of course get to work less, they get the better lifestyle, and they even have more than eight minutes with you. Why would anybody do primary care? It's ridiculous. So what do primary care docs do? Well, you know, we talk, I think, I make a plan, I talk to you, you forget 85% of that, and you remember 85, you remember 15% of that. You leave, and then we go off and live our little disconnected lives. And it all happens in eight minutes. <laughs> it's absurd, right? I mean, it's you know, been the same for the past 3,000 years. You live your life as your doctor, live your life as your doctor. You know, it's pretty obnoxious. For 77 years, we do this, people. 77 years times four visits per year times eight minutes visits. That's about 0.0000456% of your life spent with your doctor and one hour per week with your therapist, and you're still not sane. <laughs> I mean, not even close. <laughs> so docs are supposed to keep you well, right? Isn't that the point? I mean, but the biggest threat to our nation's health is bad behavior. Smoking, eating too much, sitting around, drinking too much. And docs are still the saviors for our health. I mean, with 32 minutes of time per year. So I was trained to write prescriptions. I wasn't, changed, I wasn't trained to change your behavior. Other people do that. It's absurd. So how can we do our job well? Well, hot damn. I'm pretty excited. We're not paid to do our job well. We're only paid to do two things, and that's to bring you into the office and do a procedure on you. That's the only way I get paid. So that's called fee for service. So since we only get paid for visits, you know, the effective and efficient doctors simply get paid less because we don't see you as much. For asthma, I get $200 if I prevent your asthma, but I get $10,000 to treat it. That's a good deal. So I need to see as many of you as possible. Nurses, techs, billers, receptionists, I add all these people to help me see as many of you as possible. I add 4.6 staff per me. <clears throat> that adds up to about 70% overhead. So the minutes, eight minutes, seven minutes, it goes down. Every year, when's it gonna stop? Maybe I can add a computer. Well, they streamline, streamline things, right? I mean, that's what I heard, nope. But not in healthcare at all. Um, there's no real return on investment, actually. I'm seeing 40 patients a day normally. If I add some shiny computers, I can see 44. But then I have to pay $25,000 for those computers. And in order to pay for that, I have to see 50. So it's physically impossible for me to even use a computer. Computers help me lose money. So my time is the bottleneck, and that's all I get paid for. So 9% of primary care doctors use computers. That's it. That's why 16.3% of our gross domestic product runs on handwritten notes. And also because they give me applications that look like that. They're horrible. It takes a lot of money to collect money. The insurance companies have one, and we're using 3,000-year-old tools to deliver health care in the richest country in the world. Compare this to my practice. Well, I mean, the good thing is technology replaced staff. I used free applications. I could solve problems via email or iChat, so I didn't have to see you in the office all the time. I could see eight patients a day, $200 a pop, 10% overhead. I, I was making a pretty good living. And you liked it because I was accessible. I was an old-fashioned doctor using today's tools to have a real relationship with you guys, to keep people well, to keep me happy too. You know, I worked for myself, and I was free from the insurance companies. I was accessible for the uninsured, and I got to use computers, because I like them a lot, <laughs> just like you do. <laughs> so I grew up on the internet. I have a Flickr account. I have a blog. I, have, I design my own website. I'm fairly tech savvy, and so are the latest batch of doctors, because remember, they were born in 1982. 
I lived this revolution. I mean, I saw Napster come around. I saw Amazon. I mean, it streamlined everything. I saw Facebook change the way I interact with people. Who's revolutionizing healthcare? Is it the government, the insurance companies? That's pretty, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> has anybody ever thought of like a top-down revolution? I really don't think so. It's sort of like Sears inventing eBay, right? <laughs> so what if we reimagined healthcare? What if we upgraded those 3,000-year-old tools? What if we really started communicating with people? What if we built a web platform that was more like a social network to communicate you with your health team? I mean, we could get back our relationship. And this platform could allow doctors and patients to create profiles. They could make appointments online to meet in person. We could communicate, and we could transact. You could pay me via this platform. So that you're in the center, and you have all these specialists around you that you can communicate back and forth with. And your doctor can communicate with, their, with your nutritionist. And your allergist can communicate with your acupuncturist. And everybody's communicating, and the central figure is you. Imagine that. Well, I mean, that's how it works. You can talk to professionals. Professionals can talk to you, and professionals can talk to one another. And I'm a doctor. I mean, I have time to sell. You're in need of my expertise. And there's 47 million uninsured people who are in need of my expertise. And there's a $250 billion market of out-of-pocket doctor expenses in America. There's 15 million people with high deductibles nowadays, and basically I'm just saying this because we've built this platform. <laughs> it's called Hello Health. Um, it's really exciting, guys. I mean, it's the internet, it's your local health professionals in their local office using today's communication to get easy access really when and how you want it. Um, <clears throat> so what can you do on this platform? Well, you can create your profile. You can choose your own health team. You can see their ratings. You can see their fees. You can see their profile. You can see, you can communicate with people. You can use email, IM, video chat. You can make an appointment. You can rate, their, rate your team. You can refill prescriptions. You can stay well, really. So what do you get as a member? Well, easy, accessible health care. You get some peace of mind, because you can always go to somebody, because it's sort of like pinging your Facebook friend. It's access to distant professionals, and I'm going to get into this soon. It's really cool, though. Um, and most importantly, it's affordable and efficient. It gets you what you need when you need it. So what can I do on this thing? Well, it's pretty cool. I can set my availability, because all these new doctors are like, I want a lifestyle. I can communicate with you. I can communicate with colleagues. I can organize my patients into groups and I can organize information as well. I can form groups of doctors. I can collaborate with professionals. I can get people's opinions. I can share a doctor visit with some other doctor to get their opinion. I can get paid for my professional services as well. And that's extremely important. So it's the power of Flickr, Facebook, and Amazon, but brought to healthcare. It's pretty cool. What's the significance of Hello Health? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Because, first of all, we just soft launched in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, um, August 11th. And <clears throat> we have, th uh, in addition to myself, we have three other amazing doctors that have just been so in love with how they can communicate and practice medicine now. We have one amazing space that's, that's very much like a retail, beautiful little space, uh, tiny though, and really functional and beautiful. Um, but remember this, like, live your life, visit your doctor, live your life, visit your doctor? Well, that's all gone. I mean, that's not how we do it anymore. Your team's more like a Facebook friend that you can really ping when you need them. Um, it's really continuous communication if you need it. It's, you know, convenient. But remember what it was like prior to the convenience? I mean, I no longer only get paid for office visits. I get paid for communication as well, and that's great. 50% of all visits are actually unnecessary using email, IM, and video for follow-ups. So remember those doctor lists? Remember like getting the list of doctors that you had to, to choose from? Miserable. A name. I mean, you can see my profile. Our doctors have their favorite movies, and like I think four patients have, have chosen Dr. Corrigan because he um, likes The Big Lebowski. Um, <laughs> so, you can see my ratings, you can see my fees. It's a simple rating system just tied to the transaction, much like eBay. You know, it's just the community of eBay depends on ratings. Well, I want the same thing to, I want this for Hello Health as well. I mean, a doctor with the 60% approval rating, would you ever go to that doctor? 
I don't think so, because ratings hold me accountable. But remember all that overhead? Well, it's markedly reduced, because all I need is a space and some supplies. It's pretty basic. Um, I don't have any staff. I just have the platform. I mean, our prices are extremely reasonable, even. I mean, it's even less than Planned Parenthood. Office visits are $100, $150, and $200, depending on the complexity. That even includes free prepackaged medication, so a full course of amoxicillin or a Z-Pack. It's included. Um, my online time is worth about $150 an hour for all those complicated questions. Uh, there's a $35 a month membership fee. So remember that prim primary care crisis. Well, docs really are free now. I mean, they can make really their own money, and they can have a lifestyle. I mean, they can have relationships with you again, and they can communicate normally like we all do anymore. But remember trying to spend cash? I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Have you ever tried to go out and buy a brain MRI? I mean, it's hard, because prices are all over the place, as a matter of fact. A mammogram, for instance, ranges from $150 to $750. If you're paying cash, depending on the provider, they'll actually charge you 10 times more than what they get reimbursed for an insurance company because it's time, it's an opportunity to maximize their profits that way. And allergies, same thing. Google, you can't Google search the price of a brain MRI, for instance. So what's interesting is how, that's happening is radiologists are actually coming to us and saying, wow, I mean, you guys represent a lot of cash-paying patients, so I'm going to give you a brain MRI for the same price as Medicare reimburses me. It's cash in their pocket that day, and without the overhead of the insurance companies, I mean, they don't have to deal with that. So that's a good business strategy on their part. So remember those old doctor ads? If you guys live in New York, you know who this is. Um, we don't really advertise doctors. It's similar to Zipcar. Zip car. I mean, they don't advertise their cars at all. I mean, we advertise the concept. We advertise super easy access with professionals who are just like you. And we're just really just good doctors and good people who simply want to do our jobs well. I mean, but most importantly, we can do our job better. And that's what's important. Because eight minute visits, they just suck. I mean, for both of us, it just sucks. And I miss you. <laughs> so. I really envision a bright future. I mean, I look at doctors being sort of like the executives of your health who, who plan something. And they, they create a, a goal and plan for you. And then we have experts from all over that can execute that plan. For example, if you need to quit smoking, well, we create the goal. But you know, there's a smoking cessation specialist in Chicago that's amazing. I mean, they can work with you via the platform to quit. And that guy can send me an email and say, hey, Bob needs Wellbutrin. I can just prescribe it right there in the local office. I mean, docs are horrible at getting you to change. They work in silos. I mean, currently, they're so disconnected. And the main problem is communication. That's the main problem of the healthcare system, communication. But we now have these awesome new tools to collaborate and communicate. And the net was created for this. I mean, that's the very reason why the internet was created. We hope to change the system, really, from the ground up. And that's what we're doing. And this is our new ad. We're just launching um, the official campaign uh, around November 1st. Um, and we have some really talented people to help us uh, get this to market. So um, I think that ad pretty much speaks for itself in terms of what we're looking to do. So thank you for listening. Thank you.